Hello. Today I want us to consider how important grace is, especially uh, during these times. It's important all the time, but we are entering into some perilous times uh, that the Bible talks about. We will not be able to get through it without the grace of God. We cannot get through it by our own strength, but we can get through it through God's power working in us. You see, in Romans chapter 5, verse 2, we read this. Therefore, through him, Jesus, we have access by faith into this grace in which we stand. Grace. What is grace? Well, first of all, grace is the unmerited love, favor, and mercy of Almighty God towards you and me. And this is chiefly shown through the cross of Jesus and by his resurrection. Because God is a God of love, but he is also a holy God. He is a God who is just, who must, in fact, break out on sin. Uh, he will not tolerate, he will not compromise with uh, simple, and, uh, simple people, simple behaviors, uh, those who cause sin. He must, in fact, break out on it and destroy it. And yet, at the same time, he loves us and wants to be our Father. So how does he reconcile love for us, and yet he has to be perfectly just and punish sin and sinners. Well, in order to deal with sin and yet show mercy to us, he sent his Son into the world to bear the penalty for our sin, to be the one who is our sacrifice. And so when Jesus died on the cross, he died your death, he died my death. He died the death of sinners. So that when we put our faith in his sacrifice, we have the forgiveness of sins, deliverance from the wrath of God, and we are reborn children of God and heirs of the kingdom. Jesus' resurrection declares that those who put their faith in him shall, in fact, have their sins forgiven. They will be cleansed. They'll be made new. They'll receive the Holy Spirit, and they have the right to be called children of God and heirs of the kingdom. This is grace. This is the unmerited mercy and favor and love of God. God showed his love for us, not because we first loved him, but because he first loved us and made a way for us to enter into a relationship with him through the death of Jesus on the cross and by his resurrection. But grace is also the power of God to work in our life and do for us what our flesh cannot do. It is grace that works in our lives and delivers us from habits of sin, addictions, the power of the devil in our lives. I know for myself that I was uh, addicted and held hostage to sin in my life for many, many, many years, I was held hostage to the power of the devil, uh, to the power of the sin in my life, to my own flesh. And then when I finally came to the Lord, and he came to me and showed me how to get free, his grace entered in, and I was set free immediately from something like 26 years of habitual sin. And I walked away that moment free of my sin, forgiven of my sin, delivered from the power of the devil. I was delivered from six demons immediately, filled with the Holy Spirit, and I was given the grace, the power, to live a new life, and I have not been connected to that sin since that time. I was freed immediately. That's the power of God's grace, to free us immediately from the power of sin, the power of the devil, the power of our flesh, and to do in us what we cannot do. By myself, I could not be free from sin. But by the power of God at work in me, I became a new man and free from the power of that sin and able to walk in holiness of life by the grace that I was given. That doesn't mean that I don't need to repent every day. That doesn't mean that there are other sins in my life that I need to bring before the throne and get cleansed of, but I tell you what the Bible says, that God's grace 
is sufficient for us to set us free, to make us new, and to have us walk in the holiness of life that we need to walk in so that we can see the Lord. Because without holiness, no one will see the Lord. Grace is the power of God to do in us what our flesh cannot do. It is grace, the power of God, that enables Christians to stand firm and confirm and affirm faith in Jesus Christ even when people want to kill them. It is grace that empowers us to stand when our flesh wants to run away and hide. Grace is a real substance that God puts into the life of Christians so that we may stand and live in endurance, in patience, in love towards God, and in love towards others, and in holiness of life. Grace is absolutely essential for the Christian to have and to live in if we're to do the work of the kingdom and if we're to stand in true faith and enter into eternal life. We have to have the power of God working in us to do in us what our flesh cannot do. And the reason this is so important is because now we are living in the end of the end times. We are seeing Bible prophecy being fulfilled over and over and over again. And if we do not have the grace of God, then we will find persecution, suffering, tribulation coming around the corner, and we will not be prepared to stand and give witness to Jesus and hold fast to our faith. Without the grace of God, we will be overwhelmed. We must have His grace working in us so that we can stand and in the end enter into glory. For example, we now know uh, in this country and Wisconsin and other places that they are now microchipping individuals and putting information on, into their hands so that they can uh, enter into secret areas or areas that are secure. And people might think this is harmless. But it's really not. Because this is Bible prophecy. In Revelation 13 we are told that at the end times the false prophet will cause everyone, small and great, rich, poor, to have the mark of the beast in their hand or in their forehead. And you will not be able to buy or sell without that mark. Understand what I am saying. This microchipping is the beginning of the technology that will be used by the Antichrist so that those uh, who will not receive the mark will in fact be unable to buy or sell. They will be shown to be Christians and they will be persecuted. And understand too that we will be microchipped or many people will be microchipped not because they'll be told to do evil but because They'll be told, oh, you should be microchipped because now you don't have to worry about having uh, files. You don't have to worry about keeping all your information uh, somewhere in your house. It will all be on you. And you don't need to worry about uh, keeping a bank account or keeping your ledger because it will all be right there in your hand or on your forehead. People will begin to be mi microchipped because they will be told it is to their benefit to be microchipped. Let me say right now, that's the way the devil works. He doesn't immediately work with absolute abject evil. He promises good things that eventually lead to destruction. He's a liar, and he knows how to lie by using half-truths. And so today, understand Bible prophecy is coming to pass. Understand that these will be times of tribulation. And understand that the Christian will only be able to stand if he or she is living by the grace of God. Do not believe the lies of the enemy. The time is coming and coming soon. Praise God because that means Jesus is on the way. But if you're going to meet him with joy, then you must stand against every circumstance and every lie on the enemy and live for the Bible and not for your own self-interest or the interest of the devil or the interest in the world. That requires us 
to have God's grace. Without it, we will fall. Pray for His grace. Ask for it, and you will receive. Because Jesus says, Ask, you shall receive. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened. Stand firm in the faith. Stand in His grace. And you will receive the crown of glory.